Hey guys, welcome back. I'm the Hijabi VFX girl and this week I'm starting the week off with the fundamentals of motion graphics. Now, if you use YouTube or Google, there's so many principles that you need to know. I, however, only think you need to know seven. So let's break them down. The first one, and most of you already know this, is timing, which then leads on to spacing and rhythm. The principles are basically around frames per second. Majority of people in the UK record 25 frames per second, but you can, in motion graphics, choose whatever frames per second you want the animation to move. And this can go up a tempo with the audio or down a tempo. Depending how fast or slow you want the object to move, you can see there's a vast difference between between 7, 15 and 30 frames here. Next is Easy Ease. If you've watched any of my tutorials or probably majority of After Effects tutorials on YouTube, you'll notice majority of people say, highlight the keyframes, right click and click on Easy Ease. And everyone does this and everyone goes, oh look, it looks smoother, but no one understands the principles of these. If you understand these, you'll understand the technical knowledge you need for creative decisions. The use of Easy Ease is how quickly and smoothly an object changes within the video, which equates to how you actually feel, easing control of what you see. Eases are graphs we use to animate rates of change for different properties. They are named this because you can change the value in After Effects or other animation software. You're also dictating how you want to see it ease out or in of the first value into the next. So basically you're choosing the first keyframe and how you want the object to move into the next frame. If it's quick and fast, you move the graph accordingly. If it's slow and smooth, again, move the graph to project this. All animation is trying to project the real world of a physical object in movement based in mass and weight, which is the next point. A car or bus is a heavy object, so it takes a lot of force for it to come to a stop after moving quickly. On the other hand, a toy car or bus is easy to stop even though it's moving at the same speed as a real car. When animating an object in After Effects, it's important to think about how heavy this object is. This will influence how it moves within your scene. It's because our eyes are evolved to interpret the real world and not our eyes still use information from the real world to interpret how we view things on screen. Which is why understanding how to animate an object within After Effects based on mass as well is important. Now we have those fundamentals, you can move into a more creative space using arches. Movement in all motion graphics is natural. Nothing moves in a straight line. There's a myriad of cause and effect movements which will interpret how you should move your object through the space you're producing. Whether it's gravity, momentum or physical limits such as an animation reaching out his arms. To make your animation even more realistic, adding arches to the movement is what your eye is looking to give and what the viewer wants. Motion blur is discussed I don't know how many times on YouTube and it's explained to a limit where you just need to understand why you're using it. But an object in reality moves with the forces it encounters. The more malleable they are, the more change occurs. Applying this to your graphics gives the animation more life, tells the viewer more about what the video is trying to achieve and actually adds a little bit of spice that you need. In some ways, movement and anticipating movement changes the required as large amounts of forces are taking place. Follow through and overlapping arches are key things to look at. When animating change, stagger the different parameters that you have created in your animation to give it more of a natural and energetic look, like this. The good thing about motion graphics is that you can play around with objects in the real world to break down what you actually need. When looking at these objects in real world, we have no cause to believe that isn't real, as we don't have the luxury of changing physics. But we have that in After Effects. We can change the shape of an object. A simple square doesn't all have the attributes that a person does that clue us in on their personality. So how can we make an animation of a square hold the viewer's attention the same way a person can? 
The answer is exaggeration. If we exaggerate the changes of the square, we can make up the attributes that communicate personality. If the square needs to jump or hop, make it hang in the air longer or make it fall faster to show the shape deforming. I feel like I need a jingle like those are the seven fundamentals of my motion graphics. If anybody wants to do that jingle for me, let me know. Essentially, that's it. Breaking when breaking them down, them down you just need to know these before you get started, you get started. So, so you can design a story and get After Effects to work the way you want, want and, how and how your vision is. There's, There's links, links to more of my motion graphics on the screen, on the screen somewhere. somewhere. Hit, the Hit the subscribe button to support me on this me channel. On this channel. I'll see, I'll see you on Wednesday, Wednesday guys, as I'm now posting, posting three times a week. As always, as always I'd, I'd love to hear your thoughts about it, so let me know, let me know in the comments below. below. And, and I'll see you, I'll on, see the you on the next one, one and stay, stay inspired. inspired.